Hello, denizens. Former network executive reaction here. Oh my God, not another Hollywood is broken video. Yes, but I want to get there by talking about movies, good movies. And dare I say it, they just don't make them like they used to. If there, if, if there was ever a boomer clarion call, I think that would be it. But the other day I was thinking about how Hollywood no longer makes movies like uh, specifically The French Connection, an absolutely brilliant movie. It was adapted from a nonfiction book written by Robin Moore. It starred the grizzled Gene Hackman. It had great dialogue, action, and intrigue. It, it was it also wasn't a sequel, it, it, and it also didn't have 3D effects. So it got me to thinking, uh, when was The French Connection made, and what other movies might have been released in that same year? So how much worse has Hollywood gotten? So I, I cranked up my computer, punched in movies from 1971, and, and here is a short list of what I got. The French Connection, of course, A Clockwork Orange, Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, Dirty Harry, The Last Picture Show, Get Carter, Straw Dogs, Fiddler on the Roof, Clute, Diamonds Are Forever, Carnal Knowledge, Harold and Maud. THX 1138, I'm, I'm including this here because of the Lucas connection. It's actually not a very good movie, but a precursor to that other famous movie franchise uh, he came up with, whose name escapes me. Play Misty for me. That's two Clint Eastwood movies in one year. Vanishing Point, The Andromeda Strain, Tulane Blacktop, Billy Jack, Shaft, Escape from Planet of the Apes, and I'll just leave it there. Whew. Just reading this list should shame the Hollywood studios. Did you notice anything from this list? There are only two sequels in the bunch, James Bond and Planet of the Apes. Uh, uh, not James Bond and the Planet of the Apes, so that would make a really cool movie. The others were original movies. Wow, what a concept. Some did go on to birth sequels, but holy cow, man, what an indictment. As, as to the paucity of executive talent in Hollywood. Let's sample some box offices. The French Connection cost $1.8 million to make and grossed $75 million. Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange cost $1.3 million and grossed $114 million. Now, I don't know what came first. This insane preoccupation with swinging for the fences with billion dollar grossing movies or the preoccupation with effects laden properties, but Hollywood has completely forgotten how to hit singles and doubles. They all want a two billion dollar grossing Spider-Man No Way Home. I think it's because of the corporatization of Hollywood where bean counters have billion dollar grosses dancing in their heads. Yes, we can blame George Lucas for Star Wars and both him and Spielberg for Indiana Jones and turning B-movies into uh, A-movies, but that still does not account for the dearth of films that, you know, come even marginally close to any of the movies I've listed. Maybe if people made movies like these now, that they might end up on streaming, as the multiplexes are set up to deliver a bajillion eyeballs to the tentpole superhero films. I remember when the multiplexes let you pick from a bunch of movies. Now you walk in and Love and Thunder, Love and Thunder, Love and Thunder, Love and Thunder. I'll, I'll pick Love and Thunder. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The studios don't love film anymore and they don't want to hit singles and doubles like I said. Only home runs or oddly enough, only movies that fulfill a corporate diversity agenda, which are always failures. Hmm. When some woke corporate fart catcher says that movies and TV shows must reflect modern society, what they really mean is society within the Los Angeles city limits, which I've said many times already. Perhaps the problem is the source material is turned to shit. Could, could that be it? That they aren't writing books like they used to? They certainly don't read in Hollywood. They have assistants providing praises. That isn't to say that nothing of quality 
doesn't get made. But my point is we are not seeing the sheer volume of outstanding original titles. So the question is, Denizens, has that cow left the projection room? Should studios go back to trying to finance many smaller films of quality? Should they crank back on the special effects monstrosities? Does the talent even exist to duplicate such an unbelievable number of amazing releases? My final word, you youngsters out there, probably never heard of any of these films, but I would suggest if you're a film lover to try watching them. Till next time, denizens. Be seeing you. Bow, 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 bow.